Good morning and welcome to Deliberately Creative. We're going to be doing some fall in love with fall icons, doodles, and just a really good time. Let's get started. Good morning and welcome everyone to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'm here with some autumn doodles. It, I am so in the mood for autumn and it's not autumn here yet. <laughs> Very strange, but we are having a heat wave in the Pacific Northwest. And when I say a heat wave, I actually mean a heat wave. It's going to be in the 90s for the next several days and we've got these high winds that are coming through, red flag warnings. This is totally uncommon for my area of the world. So I feel for everyone that is dealing with things of uh, super, super high heat, even higher than what we're dealing with. But, you know, we're going to make it through it, guys. And let's first put our positivity hats on and focus on those fun, warm, cozy things that make us really happy. You know, Starbucks brought out their pumpkin spice latte recently. And although I don't like pumpkin spice lattes because I don't like pumpkin in my coffee, I love the spice. I don't love the pumpkin, but I love pumpkin. Weird. I know, but I do love pumpkin spice when it's pumpkin in a pie. I've got pie on here somewhere, don't I? <gasps> I didn't. Oh, I did. I've got pie on here. Let's zoom in on this. So here are a whole bunch of doodles that I did. Things that made me think of fall. And that's what, really what I want to do here is I want to work on things that make me think of fall. Think of cool, crisp nights, crisp days, that morning light. Because the sun, when it changes its angle in the sky, the light just glows differently. And that's one of the things about autumn and fall to me is that the light also changes. And I noticed that change about a week and a half ago. I was sitting on the front porch looking outside and there it was. The light was coming in. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. All right. So if you can like and share this particular video, it would really be helpful. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and have turned on all your notifications. Let's get started on these doodles. Now I'm going to leave this sitting right here. Mm, how can I do that and keep it in the book? And ah, well, we're going to doodle on, I've got a pile of ATC cards. These are just two and a half inches across by three and a half inches tall. I'm going to doodle one or two things on a card, maybe a word, don't know. But stick around because I am going to do a giveaway of um, a couple ATC cards. Maybe we'll do a giveaway to a couple, maybe two or three people. So stick around, giveaway is going to be happening. Hi, yay, all right guys. So I wanna start off with by just saying, I'm grateful that you guys are here and I thank you for showing up every Monday and Thursday. It makes me feel so good and so happy. <laughs> yeah, all right. We're gonna go to the close-up camera. We're going to zoom -ity zoom get in nice and close. And I am using, this is just a mechanical pencil. I've got a couple different kinds here. This is a Statler um, Technio. This one has the really heavy leads in a um, holder. And then this one has like 0.7. So it's very small type lead. Is that 0.7? Yeah, 0 0.7 leads. So tiny leads. Then we also have a kneaded eraser. And a pen to do our drawing. I'm using the eco pen. This is, and the reason why I'm using the eco pen is because one, it's very inexpensive. You can get a whole tube of them 
for uh, a whole tube of 20 pens. See, this was 20 pens for around 12 and a half, 13 dollars at this time. I don't know if it's going to be more expensive in the future. Who knows? Things get that way. Uh, it has a 0 0.38 tip. The ink dries fast and it is waterproof and it doesn't smear when you use alcohol markers either. Haha, <laughs> I just found that out. And to color some of our doodles, I'm going to use watercolor pencils this time because I've had some people asking about watercolor pencils and I have a couple different sets. This happens to be colors out of the um, Arteza watercolor pencil set. I'm working on top of 140 pound Arteza watercolor. This is the cold press. It's acid free. It is not the cotton paper. It's sized nicely and it draw, you can draw on it really well. I always like to do my doodles on the smoother side. There's a slightly textured side and a smoother side. I like the smoother side better when I'm doodling. Let's get started. First up, we are going to do, oh, let's see here. I think we're going to do some pumpkins and I'm going to go in and just doodle straight with my pen. You can doodle with anything. You don't have to have, um, you don't have to have special tools. You can grab the ballpoint pen off of the counter next to the phone, whatever. I'm going to go in my pumpkins. I like to go and put a big fat oval for my center of a pumpkin. Ah, excellent. This is a great diversion. You know, you might find some doodles showing up on the sides of your, the sides of your, your paper on your notes. Now, then I'm going to use like letter C. I'm making one of those really big, fat Halloween autumn type pumpkins. And I'm doing these sort of parentheses lines around. See, I didn't go all the way down. You could. Yay. Good morning, everybody. ATC card. ATCs are artist trading cards and they are small two and a half by three and a half. And I can get a whole bunch of them done in a quick setting here and I can give them all away. So I will be doing a giveaway. So stick around in a couple minutes. I will be posting the link and the secret word. You do not have to be present to win, but you have to be present to enter. And then I'm putting the stem in. Look at that. Pumpkins are so full of character, so much fun to detail and doodle with, and they are a real symbol of autumn for me. I'm not making this one into a jack-o'-lantern. I'm just going to make it into a pumpkin. See, I like this heavy woody type of stem to it. So Hillary, did you get that? Um, the ATC is an artist trading card, two and a half inches by three and a half inches. It's based on the baseball cards and artist trading cards are traditionally they've drawn or painted or collaged or mixed media, however uh, you want to go. And they are given away. You don't tend to, you don't sell ATC cards. Now you can sell the artist edition and collectors, which are AECO something like that. And those are the same size and they are little pieces of art and you can sell those. But if you're saying it's a trading card, trading cards aren't sold, they're given. So I'm going to be giving these away. Yeah. I'm so glad everybody's making it too. So we're giving away cards and there's a pumpkin. I think I want to draw a bunch of things and then I want to paint them. So I've got my little pumpkin. Maybe I'll put a, a pumpkin leaf on here but it's kind of getting a little bit 
dry, a little bit curled up. And maybe there's a bit of a pumpkin curls coming around here from the vines. Little things like that make it just so much more fun. I have a ginormous pumpkin, and yes, I use the word ginormous. It totally surprised us. We thought we weren't going to get any pumpkins, and all of a sudden, this little pumpkin started growing. We went away on a vacation just for a weekend, and when we came back, it was so big that it was going to break the vine. So my son had set it up on top of a bucket. <laughs> Good morning. Picking a pumpkin pat, picking a pumpkin pumpkin patch. Well, I don't have to have a, a hard stress on that one. I've only got one pumpkin in my pumpkin patch this year, and I'm going to give it to my grandsons. So that way, my son has to deal with the disposal of the pumpkin, since it came off of his pumpkin vine anyway. He, uh, my son, brought the pumpkin plant over. And it has already started turning colors. It's gone from that uh, baby pale green to a really deep dark green. Now it's turning orange and uh, so surprising. So if you are new here, please click that uh, subscribe button. All right, I made the pumpkin. Now it's time for some pie. So I think I'll make a piece of pumpkin pie. And that you make a rounded edged rectangle. Just round off all your corners on your rectangle. All right. And if you can round the bottom one a little bit more, that just makes it feel a little bit more like the wedge of pie. Then you're going to, like we just did with the pumpkin, you're going to make a little bit of an outline. like that. And then we've got coming across about halfway. And that's the top crust. I know that it's controversial, but do you like the, oh shoot. Oh no, that's okay. <laughs> I'm just looking at it, trying to figure out What did I do? Oh, you know what? We're going to try that one again because I forgot to put the, the other part of that rectangle. All right. So pumpkin pie, we're going to start again. Little piece of paper. Just move over here. What I should have done was tipped it right there at the top. So we do want our, our rectangle, make it a little bit shallower, I think. Then we need to put a triangle on top of it. So at this point right here, you could have a wedge of pie. You could have a wedge of cheese. And then put the crust on because then you've got the place for the crust to go and you can see it. All right. I think this one's going to be maybe a pump, uh, not, Ooh, I could make a pumpkin pie and I could make a cherry pie. This is the cherry pie or berry pie, maybe a blueberry pie. So I'm going to put my little bubbles in here. I love pie, so I can make, I could make pie every day, but I'm working on losing weight, not gaining it because you know, this uh, COVID thing has helped a lot of people gain a lot of weight. And I think doing pie is a way better way. Uh, drawing is a way better way of having pie. All right. So now I'm going to go in and put the, put the pen on that. <laughs> so 
We're going to get the crust on. Look at that. So it's easy to do this sort of a thing. You don't have to, you don't have to be too worried and fussed. If it doesn't turn out the way you expect it to, don't worry. You can flip the card over. You can start over. It's okay. So I'm, I'm just making this have a little bit of an extra crust on the top. Put a little oval for the air hole. Thank you very much, young Clement. It is so excellent today. Today is a beautiful and excellent day. So this is my cherries. Now my cherries don't have to be perfectly circle. Actually, it's better if they are a little bit smushed. So even though I drew it with round circles, I'm going to smush them because after cherries are cooked, they are not perfectly round. They tend to uh, smush out. There we go. This could be like a little stone wall. It could be, you know, anything. That's the cool thing about when you're doodling. You can see something, you see a pattern that you're starting to draw, and you go, ooh, that could be something different. I'm going to go ahead and put a big ball of ice cream. I say it's a ball of ice cream. You, you know, it right now it's just sort of some mumps next to the pie, isn't it? And look at this. I can go in and erase out that pencil. And we've got pie to color. <laughs> so we've got uh, pumpkin. We've got a pie. I'm going to do another piece of pie because I want a piece of pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie, custard pie. And I'm going to go in and be brave. I'm going to do it with just the pen. Making my rectangle that's kind of a parallelogram. It's a little bit, a little bit slanted. And then I am going to put my triangle on the top. So pumpkin pie, do you eat the crust? Or is the crust just the vehicle to carry the custard? I want to know. I know that my grandmother used to call them bumpers on the pie, the crust here at the top. And my grandmother absolutely did not eat the bumpers, the top crust up there. My grandfather would eat the bumpers. So betwixt the two of them, they lick that platter clean. <laughs> then just put some little detail lines in. And now pumpkin pie has spices. I'm going to go ahead and put a few little, few little dots for spices in here. The crust is the best part. Yeah, I, I have to say that when there is a pumpkin pie with crust, I like the crust, but I will make pumpkin pie without crust, which is just pumpkin custard <laughs> because I am, um, I am watching what I eat and watching my weight. And the crust is actually where, for me, the way and the way I make pumpkin pie, the crust is where most of the calories are because I don't do a heavy sugar in my custard. There we go. So now we've got a cherry pie, we've got a pumpkin pie, and we've got a pumpkin. I think we need some coffee or cocoa to go with that. 
So let's see. We're going to do a couple different mugs. I think this one's going to be tall because I want to put that whipped cream on it. So let's see. Can I do it this way? There we go. Now this mug, we are not seeing down inside. We're drawing it flat-ish from the side. So I'm going to put a big U shape. And you notice it wasn't perfect. Not a big deal. I can make this smooth out and then we'll just have a shadow underneath it here. See? Don't worry if it doesn't come out, if your U shape is a little wonkety, it's okay. And then I'm going to take my line pretty much straight across. And I'm looking at that going, I didn't leave much room for my handle. So my handle is kind of sticking out the backside a little bit. See, just, just make it work. Sometimes you only eat the crust. Yeah. And Nancy gives her crust to her dog. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Be very, very careful, Dawn. Good morning. And I'm so, so happy to see you. Yeah. So we're just, we're just doing some doodles, just drawing some, some fun stuff. Now we're going to make some whipped cream. I'm going to put a little point up here. And I'm going to bring swirls down to the cup. See how we just filled that cup with a little bit of cream. Now there's going to be a little bit of a curl over and we're going to fill up the top part of it there. Yeah, so be very, very, very careful when you're out there driving, especially between California and Oregon, heading into Northern California, going through the fires. Be really, really careful. Now, this looks like a piece of meringue, doesn't it? It could be a meringue on the top of a pie or a cake. Blah. It could be a meringue cookie st sitting on top of a cup of cocoa, or it could be whipped cream, you know. So then I'm going to go ahead and make my shadow a little more shady. <laughs> Let's make that shadow a little more shady. And it's not going to make total sense and that's okay. Shadows don't always make sense because you can have mixed lighting. there. I'm going to put a little bit of some detail on here just so that it feels maybe a little more round, but I'm not, I'm not putting the pen down hard. I'm letting it just barely touch. There, see? And by having that broken line, it makes it feel sparkly. I love how our art community is so connected with each other. And now I did just do that, didn't I? Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to make a little bit heavier outline. I'm saying there's a bit more of a shadow falling around the back edge there. That's, you know, you can make it anything it needs to be. I think I want a little bit more cream popping out that edge maybe a little bit more coming up like that. So now we have, we've got pumpkin, uh, we've got cocoa or coffee with a big dollop of whipped cream. We've got a pumpkin 
we have a cherry pie with vanilla ice cream. We've got a piece of pumpkin pie. Ooh, maybe we'll put setting off to the side a dollop of cream. That good canned uh, whipped cream, that lovely squirty, squirty can of cream. A little bit of a shadow on that one. See, sometimes I'll go back and put a little bit more detail in before I put color. Maybe a little bit of shadow underneath. Yeah, calling, I didn't, um, my husband, I don't know what his family called the crust. Honey, what'd your family call the crust? Just the crust? The edge? Of a pumpkin pie? They call it bumpers? bumpers. <laughs> just the crust? They called it just the crust, okay. <laughs> That's right. Shadows aren't shady. They're just the absence of light in an area. Oh, so we need to we need to get that um <laughs> we need to get that giveaway started. So, live giveaway. I need to get my fun little bit here. So live giveaway. Paste. Enter to win the ATC card made during this show. My, is my include not spelled right? Include. There it is. Must include the word of the day. The word of the day is crisp air because that's what I really, really really am looking forward to and you know neat thing is if you want pumpkin pie or something you can just make it on a card oh my gosh you've got four cards now i'm going to be drawing probably three names so people have a really good chance of winning this time so enter the giveaway you do not have to be present to win but you do have to reply to my email if uh, you win, make sure you're checking your spam because when I send from my work email, for some reason, many email, um, email, uh, yeah. the apps will see my email and for some reason want to throw it into the spam folder or junk folder. So check your junk mail. If you won for my email, um, asking for your mailing address. So I will have your winner mailing address in the, um, in the subject line. There we go. All right. I am, I want to do the ball jar. I think that that's fun because when you learn how to draw a jar, you can put anything in it. So, and I'm going to be brave and do it just with the pen. So I'm making sort of a smile at the bottom. I'm going to just go and make sure that I have a rounded corner and I'm going to come in like that. And I, you know what, this one's going to be a glass bottle because I came around the top a little bit far. That's okay. I can just make it into a glass bottle and then we will do the ball jar next <laughs> because sometimes you, you draw a little bit over. It's no, it's okay. So now I've got this kind of like little jug. But I want it to be kind. I want it to be see-through feeling. So 
also I'm going to put a little bit of a line drawing a second line basically but the, where you get the see-through feeling is when you go and you give it the back of the bottom so look at that that was easy and then if you give it sparkly line sparkly line is just the not pressing hard as you make your line. Oh my goodness, look at that. We just made a bottle. Maybe I'm going to give it the back side of that. Now it's really a clear bottle. <laughs> ah, well, thank you guys. You know, it's, there's a lot of practice. There's a lot of time spent, uh, drawing and doodling. I think I'm just going to put a heart on this bottle. Sort of like it's embossed in. So it's not a solid hard line. You kind of see it there. Did you see what I just did there? Did you see it? I went, I did a solid line on outside of the bottle and then I did sort of a light dashed line coming across and then it became solid again when we came out. That makes it feel like this is sitting on top of something now, doesn't it? Maybe I'll put a little not shady shadow We're going to use some colored pencils here and just watercolor pencils here in just a minute to color this in, give it a little bit of shimmer and shine, but I want to get that ball jar. So I think what I'll do is I'll start at the top this time and see how we've got this skinny sliver. That's the top of the lid. Then I'm going to come out from that and make another little line around it. That's the top of the rim. Then we'll come down on either side. All right. And then we'll do a connecting line between those two spots and make it just a little bit wider than the lines that came down. So now we've got, I'm going to put another li little line right here. Now we've got the rim of our jar. Right? This is going to be one of the little squishy ones. It's going to be a tiny, the, the little ball jars, like the little half pint jars. So you, you come down and you give it shoulder and then you come out. You can look at this and say, Oh, you know what? You didn't do a very good job there, Steph. And I'll say I did a fine job because if you ever look at old glass jars, they start to feel a little bit wonky, don't they? Those really antique ones. We're going to make sure that we've got that bit of thickness to our glass that we're looking across. We've got that bit of a bottom coming around. And that's something that a lot of people forget is that there's thickness to the glass. It's not just a single line thick. And the light bounces through that differently. So we've got a bit of a sparkle line coming 
down the front. We've got a line going to the back and a line coming to the front. Ooh, ooh, you know what? Something that, let's see. Do we want to put something inside? What do we want to put inside the jar? Or do we want it to just be the words? Hmm. Maybe I'll just put ball on here. Now, ball, it is um, actually written kind of in cursive. And, but you, you're not going to see every single see I'm not gonna see every single edge of that and I didn't draw I didn't draw it perfectly but you know what you know that you know what that is right it's a ball jar So you can put anything in your jars. You could fill your jar with buttons. You could fill your jar with pickles. Or tomatoes. Or cookies. Ooh, cookies. Okay, my jar is going to get a couple cookies. And even though this is a decision after the fact, and there's going to be a line going through it. I'm not worried about it. Cookies in the jar. So maybe I'm going to put the zigzag icing on these cookies. And by doing that, what did I do? I just disguised, I just disguised that line that was going through the middle of the cookie, didn't I? Did I just do that? I did. Zigzag frosting and it's chocolate. That's right. Glass is not a, actually glass is not a solid. Glass is a very slow moving liquid. It is always liquid. And that's why in the castles, oh, did you know that in castles, they, um, when they first had glass, what they would do is every couple years, they would take the glass out of the windows and they would rotate it. So that's why you see a lot of square windows. And they're small panes, <laughs> so they could take them out and they could rotate them, which kept them from sagging. Over the years, the old glass would sag and puddle and become very thin and brittle at the top and very thick at the bottom. I'm all full. <laughs> yeah, I'm all full of different, different bits of information. I learned that when I was over in the UK. And where was I? I think I was in a little house that was like Mary Queen of Scots nursery house. The, the house where she basically was raised. All right. That cookie just got some, um, like, a. I don't know, they might be chocolate chips, but I th they might be sprinkles. All right, oh my goodness, look at this. So we have cookies in a jar and a lovely little love potion bottle. We have pumpkin pie and cherry pie. We have a pumpkin and a latte. <laughs> It's an amorphous solid, a state that lies between solid and liquid. Yes, absolutely. All right, I need a couple more 
See, one of the things that I love to do is I love drawing a whole pile of these kinds of things and then having them um, to just sit in color. So draw up a whole pile of things. These are also great for making as random acts of art to, uh, to leave like on your table or uh, with your tip give it to the uh, person who's delivering <laughs> once once it's safe to give things away to people again <laughs> me it's safe to give give away to give away things as, as far as i'm concerned paper is not seen to be something that carries the uh, covid-19 so okay i want to do just a a lovely branch And I'm going to make it so that it has a little bit of thickness. So doing these kinds of doodles is just so restful, so calming. Relieves some stress. See, I'm just putting little lines and I'm not, I'm not being real heavy handed with when I press down with my pen, I'm, I'm being pretty light with it. I'm letting it skip. This one actually ended up on the uh, textured side. So another reason why it will skip more. And now I'm just going to put a few leaves. Yeah, Mark has, Mark has said for years and years that he likes, he likes my pen work. He likes watching me draw. You know, this reminds me of like a beanstalk. Maybe we'll, ooh, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll have a little stem coming down and give it like a, some dried bean. totally unplanned guys that's what happens you know I just start doing these doodles and ideas start popping into my head beans sometimes have that little bit of a cap left on it from the dried up flour and now this is totally out of my out of memory so if it's not exactly right it's okay maybe I'll put a little that little string line and then a little bit of a seems like I remember there being like a little end tip to it See, now we've got fun beans growing on a, on a, on a bean plant. <laughs> That's how we do. Reminds you of jalapeno peppers and banana peppers. Oh, it could be peppers. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that could definitely be peppers. But it can also be beans. So it can be all kinds of things. Could be peas, could be beans, could be... See, so you, you get more of that bean feel from it when you start giving it some lines for shape and thickness. And that sort of almost outline that you get of the beans. All right. Oh, so we're going to uh, put the the link for the giveaway. I'm doing three envelopes, and we'll put two cards in each envelope. So if I've got beans, what's something else that should go with beans, guys? Actually, the bean could go with the pumpkin. So we've got our garden. 
Maybe put another bump on the back of that. So we've got things in the garden. We've got dessert. We have our jars. So we need something to go with coffee or cocoa. So what's something to go with coffee or cocoa? You guys get to tell me. Go with beans? Oh yeah. I remember canning beans when I was a kid. Oh, teapot. Or a candle. Ooh, I want to do the cup with the candle. <laughs> so it's going to be a, a cup with a candle. Maybe it's a cup with a cinnamon spice candle. So I'm going to do the same thing where I'm doing the flat line for the top. We're going to come down, come across, and go back up. This time, I'm not going to draw the solid line there. I am going to put a tricky handle on it. We're going to come out and do two lines. And then we're going to have it slope down in. This handle is an arty handle. <laughs> I'm looking at that going, oops. <laughs> but see, it's a cup that has a candle in it, and that's why. The person made the cup and then realized there was no way anybody was going to drink out of that cup. I want to make it a little bit wider. Make the cup a little wider. Look at that. So something else for you to realize is that nothing is written in stone, even when you're drawing with a pen. You have the option and ability to change things up, make things, you know, not as weird feeling or make it really weird feeling, make it a little unsettling. See, part of my thing is I'm drawing away from me here on the table and that handle is weird because I sloped down. I should have been more straight out. So I'm going to finish this one because I'm going to finish it. I'm not going to stop in the partway mode because I'm learning, I'm learning here what I want to do. And that's part of doodling. You learn as you go. It is all part of candle thing on there. It's, it's all part of experimenting. Love the candle. And yeah, the handle. Now I see what I did. I'm going to draw another one. And I see that I needed my handle to be more upright. I still like the, that squared off look. And I'm doing this in a really odd order, aren't I? And I'm still doing it really weird because I want it to be weird. I think this one's going to be up on a little pedestal. My mom had these really funky coffee cups when I was growing up that had pedestals on them. And there we go. It just needed to be finished. This is a really huge handle. I think I'm going to make this a bigger cup. And I can, because like I said, nothing is written in stone. You 
are the one in control of your picture. Your picture is not in control of you. The only thing that is slowing you down is your own level of skill with the pen. And the only way you get better is by doing lots of art. And there's going to be times when you make something and it's like, oh my gosh, should I just give up now? And the answer is no. No, don't give up. There's some very, very accomplished artists out there that, that say, there are 10,000 bad pieces of art in you. And you need to get through those 10,000 bad pieces of art to get to the, to get to the masterpiece, to get to the one that just makes your heart go, oh. and then every once in a while, one of those will pop out when you're doing your 10,000 bad pieces of art. So, you know, that is sort of my philosophy. I've got a lot of bad art in me still. I, I don't know. Maybe I've done 10,000, but I haven't done all the bad pieces that are inside me yet. Now I'm just giving it a little bit of thickness there. And then there's a bit of a shadow under here. And there's a bit of a shadow under there. Just because I want to. I think this cup is going to end up with stripes again. I like the stripes. I think it's going to end up also having some polka dots. So if you are enjoying this, please make sure that you have clicked that subscribe button and the notification bell. Make sure also that you click the like button and let me know if you like this type of artwork, if you want to see more uh, doodle sessions where we just grab little pieces of paper and just start drawing little things. I am happy to do that. <laughs> this looks like a shirt. Those look like buttons going down the front of a shirt, don't they? In a very interesting place because it would be back here by your hand. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. A diving platform for this one. And the little, the little sparkly sprites are, are jumping off. I like that, Dawn. Thank you. See, you can make things work out. However, see, I want to put a bit of shadow under there and a bit of shadow under here and a bit of shadow there. See, it's not a bad picture. It just wasn't exactly what I was going for. So, you know, just set it aside, come back and go, oh, that's actually kind of cute. And especially when somebody else that you admire or that you uh, value their opinion or their suggestions says, oh, well, you know, it could just be. <laughs> Doesn't that look, that does, that just looks like a, it looks like the, the front of a shirt there. Now we're going to put that candle. So I want to put a little bit more of a rim or maybe that's the, uh, the top of that shirt. <laughs> I'm going to put my candle, my little flame, I'm 
and you can make it as sharp or as wonky as you want. I think this one's getting a little bit wonky. I like that. Sitting on a table. All right. I... I'm going to go... Oh, you know what that looks like. That looks like Mama Cup and, and Daddy Cup getting ready for their nighttime routine. <laughs> oh, hey guys. So if you follow me on Instagram or on uh, Facebook, you will have already seen this coloring sheet. How's that? I made this coloring sheet for, um, for all of my patrons, all of the people that watch my channel, that subscribe to the channel, that share my, my artwork. It's a gift for you. <laughs> and it's this cute little gnome that bought way too much toilet paper this year and decided to make a costume make his mummy costume for Halloween. So <laughs> there's that. And I'm planning on doing more of my, my particular type of gnome. So in the different seasonal type of situations. So I hope that looks good. Yeah. The whip looks like hair, doesn't it? It, it looks like the top of a head. So here, this is, this is the fun part when we can lay them all out. So I guess I'm going to do four giveaway. So if you haven't already entered, make sure that you click on the entry. And today's word is crisp air. Ah, so we're going to start coloring these now. And I am looking at this going, how long have I been on? I need to set that there so I can see my time show up, I think. Oh, no, there it is. Oh, my goodness. We've been on for an hour already? <laughs> well, good thing that we're going to be coloring with watercolor pencils. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, hey guys, if you want to nab a screenshot of all of the pieces of art here, there we go. Nice, easy screenshot before I color. That looks like they're on there pretty straight. Oops. My phone decided to wake up. I need to go and say, do not disturb. There we go. All right. So there you go. You've had your chance. We're going to start coloring. I am using watercolor pencils to do this. Yeah. 57 minutes. Wow. So if you were here for just the doodling, thank you so much. If you're sticking around for the watercolor pencils, this is going to go pretty, pretty quick because let's see, I want to do the jars first. And I have right here a Robin egg blue. And I'm going to put a bit of blue around the edges. And this is watercolor pencil. So it's going to, that's interesting. I told it do not disturb. It shouldn't have done that. I am going to go ahead and put some color on and then we will use our water brush. It's just a plain water brush and move the color around. I'm going to make it a little bit heavier to one side of the lettering. Give it a bit of a shadow under the lid and a little bit heavier color underneath of the cookies. I did put crumbs in the bottom, but you know what? 
And then I am going to use, ooh, I did not put an actual warm brown out here. Oh well, I will use my pumpkin orange and go in. I'm gonna first put some color on the cookies and then I am going to wash some of that blue right over the top of it. It will mix a little bit. But it'll be fine because what it will do is mute the color. And this is a bit of vermilion. Warm it up a little bit. Don't press hard with your color, your watercolor pencil. Let it sort of skip around on the top. And if you like the way you colored it in, you don't even have to get it wet. Don't, don't wet it if you don't like, if you, if you love how it turned out, don't wet it. And then I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber. Oh my goodness, Sharna, two in the morning. Oh, you just finished. So you're a third, sh are you a um, second shift or a third shift? I'm putting a little bit of this burnt umber on here to kind of tone those colors down a little bit, make it feel a little bit more cookie. Look at that. A little bit of a shadow in the cookie. A little bit of a shadow underneath of some of those. Maybe those are seeds. Maybe this is a sesame seed cookie there. some shadows. So this is very much like doing the, um, a few years ago, there was a thing that we would do, you know, art game that we would do. Anybody up for an art game video? Let me know after I tell you what, how the art game is played. The art game is played by having a piece of paper and someone gives a theme or a topic, a suggestion for a, you know, like gnome. So you would draw a gnome and I might draw my gnome really little on the paper and you might draw your gnome really big. And then somebody says, um, skis. So then you've got skis and you want to work it in and try and make it into a picture with these random things that are being given to you. So then somebody might say sunglasses and somebody else might say a porcupine. So now you've got a gnome, ski, sunglasses, and a porcupine, and you're trying to fit them all together in a cute picture. It's a lot of fun. And I must say that it's something that I kind of miss. So maybe we'll do art game if anybody's interested. And it's just a doodle game. It's not something that we end up with a beautiful finished piece of artwork. It is something that you have a lot of fun doing. I'm going to take that burnt umber and I'm going to put a little bit of that up in the lid. And once you have these kinds of things drawn, you start real realizing that it's like coloring in your uh, rubber stamping that if you were a rubber stamper years ago or still are, you'll see how this is like coloring in rubber stamping. All right. I'm going to color this jar and I'm going to give it a slight pink cast since it's this sweet, sweet jar of love potion bottle. Let's make it a, a pink. So this is the crimson red. And I'm just lightly putting the color on. I might put it on a little heavier in a couple spots, but I'm never scribbling hard. I don't, my particular way of doing, I don't like seeing the pencil lines in my in my my watercolor af, in my watercolor pencil after I have got it wet 
And this bottle is going to end up being mostly colored. But what I want to do when I get it wet is I want to leave some spaces of white. By leaving some spaces of white, it will leave the impression of glossiness. We can always go back in with a white gel pen or my favorite, the Signo Uniball White. <laughs> I'm putting a little bit more of a shadow right here, the base of that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and get these wet. And I just realized, oh, there. <laughs> it's like, oh, I need to find a piece of paper napkin. So if you ever wondered, yeah, I reuse paper napkins until I can't, until I can't reuse them. <laughs> So I'm getting my pen wet, my, my pen, my, this, my watercolor brush. It's a plastic barrel filled with water, has a valve here in the middle. And when you squeeze on the barrel, it allows water to come down through and out the bristles. This one is very pointy. So I can get nice detail with it. And we'll go ahead and zoom in even closer. See? And if I know that I want something a little more solid, I will go to that outside edge and make sure that the outside edge feels a little bit thicker. There we go. And now I'm just getting it wet and I'm moving that pigment around. This is the same pigment that's in the regular colored pencils. It is just in a binder that is more water soluble. And now some people will even try with regular inexpensive watercolors, try a little bit of water with it and you end up with a bit of the pigment moving just like with watercolor pencils. It's not as movable with regular water or regular colored pencil, but it's a way to see. So some people are saying the, the old Arteza pencils. So if you bought your, like the first type, the first sets of the pencils, they might be a little more water soluble but this is the actual watercolor pencils from Arteza. If you're interested in any of the materials I'm using, they are listed down below in the more information box. All right, I'm gonna grab, I've got the Carmine Red. I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight or shadow. The paper is drying quickly because it's very warm and dry here right now, as I was saying earlier. We are heading into our own weird weather of super warm. This is the 140 pound Arteza watercolor paper, if you were interested. And you see how that pen does not bleed. And that was the Eco Pen. So if you came in late, this is the Eco Pen. It I buy it on Amazon in sets of 20 for about $12, $13. And it is a cardboard tube with your pen insert. The ink is awesome. It dries almost instantly and it put a little pink down here on the on the floor. It dries almost instantly. And it is good when you're using the uh, alcohol markers also. It doesn't bleed out when you use alcohol markers. So cool. Oh, questions. Thank you. All right. Are you ever supposed to dip a watercolor pencil in water first? 
that is a technique that I have seen people do and you can, but you don't want to dip, you don't want to get the wood wet. So if you do it, you want to just get the tip wet, but not the wood. And you don't want to leave it soaking in the water. If you leave it soaking in the water, you're just going to dissolve all of your pigment into the water. So there you go. Oh, thank you. Nancy, welcome to the crew. And if you haven't already clicked that subscribe button, go ahead. I have been doing doodles and art drawing videos on my channel. I'm coming up on my five year anniversary and we are inching closer and closer to a hundred thousand subscribers. So, Hey, I'd love to have you be part of the crew and share the journey. I'm putting some of this down on the wet paper. So that's another technique is have your paper wet and then let the pencil just melt onto the, onto the wet paper. It will tend to stay a little more attached and not blur out as much when you do it that way. So there, all right. I need to, I do need to sign. Oh, and when you sign your, your cards, you can put like your initials on the front and then on the back of your card, you would put your name and, uh, the year. And if you had a theme that you were going for a theme, Ah, uh, thank you, Jan. You know, it's, I'm doing something that I love and I think that comes through. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my, my blue wet down here a little bit and move it around, leaving some white because that's your reflections, softening up that shadow under the lid going to come down around under here, under the cookies, above the cookies. And Nancy's question, or Nettie, Nettie's question was, how do you get rid of the, smooth out the watercolor pencil lines? How do you smooth out the watercolor yeah, pencil she, lines? She still gets the lines drawn. Um, one of the, one of the tricks is don't press super, super hard. Now you see, you, you can't get all of the lines out all the time. If your pencil is really sharp, you're going to put an impression of the color down. Um, so this is quite sharp. So if I lightly color, or if I press harder, or if I press really hard. Okay. So now you've seen three ways of putting it down. If I go to this one where I was very light and I, I kind of use my water brush in a circular motion or going the direction that the, that the item is. So that was doing it quite soft and light. And I got rid of most of those pencil lines. This middle one here, put a little bit more water on it. And that's another, another way is use, use more water. If you put it really, really hard, use more water and kind of go both directions. But see, I could do that and then come back and I could put more paint into that puddle. See, and then with the super, super hard lines, even when I put a ton of water, okay, so you see, this is really getting to be a puddle. It takes a lot of almost scrubbing. And if you are on a delicate paper, you will end up, or a less expensive paper, you will end up. Uh, you could scrub a hole through your paper 
and then see I have I've picked up paint there I could actually continue to use that paint out of my brush until it's completely clean so I hope that helped if you notice here you can still see the pencil lines there you can barely see the pencil lines here and you can not quite almost maybe see pencil lines even in the lightest area so it is a uh, it is a technique it is a technique um, you can wet the paper first and move the paper move your ink around just like I was doing in that shadow instead of putting the uh, see I'm, I'm losing my words um, instead of putting the the pencil down all right I I need to focus for a second I'm just getting the cookies wet and I'm actually letting some of that cookie color color come up into the jar because it's like the cookies are reflecting inside there we go so now we have our glass done and now these are simple 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 glass drawings I'm not see I, there's a little bit of a wet spot there your pencil will actually slip around on the wet spot and then I want some of the blue also in spots very light and then just smush out my shadow there you go smush out those shadows see and I I'm not putting a ton there had to work the ink or work the water down if you don't put a lot of pencil down though you don't have enough um, enough pigment to move around so you need to you have to find the balance between how much pencil you're putting down and how hard you're pressing if you see because I wanted more shadow down here and my paper is wet now so when I put this down it's it's gonna it's gonna almost be like a marker and the pencil does not move as well once you put it down on wet paper so you know pay attention when you're putting it down where you're placing it and you will see your pencil lines more on wet paper it's just the nature of the beast there we go <laughs> ah thank you yeah so just have fun oh now look at that the pen will bleed I've never put it on top of wet water Wet. I've never put it on top of wet water before I've never put it on wet paper before so the pen will bleed out a little bit if you put it on water ooh that's an interesting effect that's something to remember all right now we're gonna go ahead and get these guys going I am going to put kind of a blue cast shadow in my whipped cream going to be fill it in put that shadow in kind of work my way up you could put a warmer shadow on it you could put a, a yellow or a a little bit of an umber or something like that I'm um, or a sienna I 
I decided I wanted a blue shadow. Sometimes things that are white will get kind of a blue shadow. I wouldn't suggest using gray shadow on whipped cream because it makes it look a little flat. Hot cup of cocoa with whipped cream. Mm. Or a cold cup of whipped cream. <laughs> Nobody says there has to be something underneath of there. Maybe it's a big chocolate. Ooh, cold chocolate milk with a big dollop of whipped cream on top. So you can make it like, what is it? Iced cocoa. And I think that our mug is actually going to go into the purple land just because. So I'm lightly letting it go on. And I'm leaving a little bit of a rim of light around that, that very edge coming forward. Maybe making it a little bit heavier with the pigment towards the bottom. If you notice, I'm going kind of from, I'm not drawing straight down from the top to put the color on. I'm using more of the pencil by laying it on its side. Sort of that trick that you learned when you were five. Or, well, I learned it when I was five or six laying the crayon on its side to fill the back of the paper, the, to fill the background more quickly. The more pigment you put on, the more pigmented your object is going to be. But just remember it is watercolor, so you can't easily get your, your white back. You can go in and add white pen to give you sparkle and highlight. I'm going to put a little bit of that purple down here in the shadow where some light would be reflecting and maybe shining off of this. There we go. <laughs> Tell Miss T that I fully approve of lots of whipped cream on strawberries and blueberries. But that leaving leaving some whipped cream for grandma to have <laughs> is also a good thing. <laughs> There we go. See? That's pretty. That's very pretty. And if you pick color up in one spot, you can move it to another spot. Maybe I am going to go ahead and use that. This is the lavender purple. I'm going to put just a little bit heavier shadow at the base. So these designs would be really fun painted on rocks or on um, little canvases or on cards to give to people. So, you know, enjoy the, the opportunity to practice your doodles. See, I put a lot of water down and I'm lightly, lightly putting the pencil into that water. Maybe I'll grab that Prussian blue. That's the Prussian blue. That's what I used up in the... Ooh, a little bit of Prussian blue down here in the very deep shadow.
just a smidge, maybe a little bit back here on the handle. Ooh, that was a little strong. Blur it out. See? There we go. And now, really quick, I'm going to work up towards the tip, down towards the base of each of those little sections for the cream. And I'm going to leave that center alone. So it ends up with that beautiful creamy look. Cold, cold, cold cream, not cold cream. <laughs> Many people here will know what I mean when I say cold cream. Um, I watched a, a YouTube video recently where it was a mom and a daughter and the mom was showing her eighth grade um, beauty routine. And the daughter, who's in eighth grade, was showing her beauty routine. And it was so funny. I'm looking at the... Thank you so much, Diane. I hope that you have a lovely, lovely day. Oh, and remember, guys, we're giving these cards away. So if you are interested in winning what I'm going to do is when we do the, the the giveaway in just a little bit because I need to I need to get some more colored before I can do that oh my feet hurt <laughs> I've had my feet sitting on top of a, a drawer that's pulled out under my desk and I'm barefoot <laughs> ah So we're going to be giving away two cards. Let's, let's zoom out just for a real quick. I need to wiggle my feet. Ow. <laughs> so this is where we are so far. And this is where we still have to go. <laughs> we still have our, we still have all the, the foodie food bits. It's looking good though, isn't it? I'm pretty excited about that. All right. So yeah, if you, I totally understand. If you guys can't hang out, make sure that you've entered the contest. You do not have to be present to win, but you do need to check your junk mail or your spam folder for my email if, if you are a winner. So check, check to see if you are a winner. After the show, I will be uh, sending emails to folks asking for the uh, your mailing address. And I will mail anywhere in the world. So I am going to give this guy... Ooh, let's see. Do we want it... So do we want it to kind of go along with? Do we want to give him the blue... Prussian blue stripe with maybe a, well, we could do it with the crimson or, ooh, nah, we're going to make, we're going to give him, I'm going to take the pumpkin orange. This is, this is going to be a wild and crazy cup, guys. This is going to be a, he's got a pumpkin orange nightshirt with Prussian blue stripes. And maybe Prussian blue buttons. And the way I'm going to do this is go in and do my orange. And then 
then go back in and put the blue the blue stripe in. And I think I'm going to give it a vermilion shadow underneath the buttons. See, it's a doodle. It doesn't have to make sense. A little vermilion down here on the foot. Fun stuff. Ooh, let's see. We're gonna go and just put a little bit of this orange up here too, just because. And a little bit of this Tuscan sun. Just for a little extra brightness. Where'd my pen go? There it is. So. Oh, thank you. In the pillow, in the, in the bath the box. Oh, thank you. Oh, that makes my feet feel better. <laughs> Bickies or biscuits? Oh, yes, I know that. And biscuits are cookies. <laughs> oh, and the fan, too. Thank you, sweetheart. Mark is taking care of me. He brought me a pillow to put under my feet in the, in the drawer. You know, I'm, I am on the vertically challenged side of the spectrum and my feet don't always hit the floor in a comfortable way. So I have that drawer pulled out from the cupboard underneath of me to put my feet on, but it was a wooden edge. <laughs> So he just brought me a pillow to put my feet on. And then he turned the fan on so that the air is moving. Oh. So do you guys like these little bit longer doodly chatty type videos? I'm having fun. Oh, you know, that, that shirt could also be like a pumpkin. <laughs> Look at that. It could be very pumpkiny. Maybe a little bit of that vermilion under the handle. And I think, so I'm going to go and put that Prussian blue stripe in. Oh, well, thank you. It's, it's nice to do something that is soothing and calming. If you, you know, are doodling along, I'd love to see your doodles. So sharing them on uh, Instagram or Facebook and tag me, or you can share it on the Facebook page for Deliberately Creative. And it's just at Deliberately Creative and you'll find me. We also have a lovely little group on, on Facebook that is Deliberately Creative group. You do have to answer all three questions to join. And that's just to keep people out that are not, um, not there to, to be creative, but try to sell things to us. We are, if now I do self promote in my, in my group, but it's not a, not a place to self promote unless I've given you permission. And so always ask and find out if it's something that 
we're in the in the mode of doing. I have done a little bit of promotion every once in a while. If you're around the group a lot and you have something that you want to share with the group, always share your, your good finds on art supplies. If you are selling things, physical things, we have to talk before you can do any type of promotion. And generally, I like to do the promoting. Beauty and the Beast teacups. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these would definitely fit with Beauty and the Beast. This one especially. Maybe this is Chip's dad. All right. So yeah, we're we're going for a long haul here, guys. I think what it is is I'm I'm not feeling guilty, but I'm feeling a little guilty because coming up in a couple weeks, there's going to be um a couple weeks of just dropped videos, not live videos because we are going to take a little bit of time off from YouTube and the internet and go out into nature and do some do some traveling and some art in nature. Oh, aren't those pretty? All right. Oh, sign. Oh, that one's all wet. Need to wait on that one. So I will be dating the back of these. They are a, they are one of one. So maybe I can right there dry enough. So ha ha. All right, we're going to we're going to get the pumpkin and the beans and then we're going to do the pie last. So pumpkin, I'm actually going to take the burnt umber and put burnt umber down here at the base working my way up it's a nice natural type of brown tone but getting getting some nice natural colors in yeah recharging with nature absolutely thank you Thank you guys for being so understanding. I am so excited. There's going to be a lot of photographs being taken. So patrons be on the lookout for a lot of photographs of from this trip. If you are interested in being a patron, I have a patron on Patreon and we are working our way towards 50 followers. And once we hit 50 followers, we're going to have a all day, come in, go out, open house live stream where there's going to be prizes and laughter and art for my patrons. So if you're interested in that, I also do live art get or giveaways of art that I do in my live shows or that I do just specifically for my patrons. And sometimes I will even just mail out art to somebody if I feel like they need a little pick me up. So it's a lot of fun. And that is a monthly patronage, but you don't have to, you know. Um, other ways to support my channel, liking and sharing the videos. Oh my gosh, that is one of the best ways to help a channel, any channel out. This is the Vermilion. I'm just putting a little bit of that in here. I am somebody who likes to get all my pencil laid in and then just have that, woo, wow, color. 
color party just happen? So this is vermilion, which is a very orangey red. And you can layer your colors. You can get new colors by layering. And as I said at the beginning, if you like how it looks before you get it wet, you don't have to get it wet. You can just use your, your watercolor pencils just like colored pencils. And you can get lovely effects, lovely smooth blends and things like that. Sometimes watercolor pencils will layer more easily because there's less wax in them. And now pumpkin orange. Oh yeah, there's going to be an open house party on Patreon when we hit 50 followers. So I am really looking forward to that. We might have a, a mini open house party when I come back from my from my trip. You know, a short open house. Or just a, a short live show just for my patrons. So that's that should be fun. This is the pumpkin orange. See how I'm just layering these colors. They're going really nicely. I am going to try and leave a little bit of light just so that it looks like light is moving around here. I am going to take a deep, this is coyote brown and it's a very green brown. If you press too hard, you will break the tip. I had it too sharp anyway. But coyote brown works really well in here and a little bit of burnt umber on the stem. You see, I'm not coloring it in totally. I'm leaving some space. And then I am going to go ahead and take that coyote brown. It has a green tone to it since these leaves are starting to die. Start getting a little bit of some other tone here. So maybe the back of it is that coyote brown and the front of it is, oh, that's spearmint. That might be a little too blue. Yeah, I'll just put some coyote brown in that. See, you can, you can make this work out. I'm going to make it work because I want that green darker, but oh yeah. So put the coyote brown in there, deeper, darker on the inside, and then work my way up to a lighter tone on the outside. And you can sculpt it a little bit with your brush. So just give yourself permission to play with it and see what happens. I should have grabbed a different color. Let's see, a different green. Basil green. Hey there, Off Kilter Crafter. Nice to see you. Yeah, I'm actually doing a really long live show. Wow. We have been making fun doodle artist trading cards. And these are all being sent out in this contest right here. There are multiple cards. Yes, I am going to pick four winners. So people have a really good chance of winning. And then I'm going to put just a tiny bit of Tuscan Sun right around the edge of where that bright glow is going to be. Make sure when you enter that you put your first name, last name, and the secret word of the day, which is crisp 
air. Maybe I'll put a little, ooh, a little yellow down here on the leaves. There we go. All right. I'll, I'm going to get the beans done too real quick. The beans. I am going to use the spearmint green just to get the, the pod laid in. And then we will layer on some of those other colors. Say these are like the blue lake beans. They do have a bit of a blue cast. Maybe even some of that up in the leaves. Now these leaves probably aren't the way bean leaves are. This was a doodle that morphed into something. Then the coyote brown. So I want these leaves to be heading more towards more towards harvest. So they're starting to turn brown. But there's still a little bit of green in them. So when we when we get this wet and that just goes whoosh. But I am going to use this to do the stem. And I'm pressing pretty hard on that. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Pardon me. I tried to turn away as quickly as I could, guys. I could feel the sneeze coming. So there we go. All right. And then I'm going to take some of the basil green and use that for shadowing. on the bean pods. There we go. This is going to be very natural. And then maybe even a little bit of that coyote brown up in those flower, the little flower bit that was at the top. Okay, we're going to get these wet. Ha ha. Thank you. Oh yeah, getting getting these done on blank note cards and just having a whoops, sorry. Just have a pile of them. It makes it so nice to be able to. Ooh, look at that. We're getting it all wet. Yeah, having a pile of cards, being able to just sit down when you when you just want to color something, but you don't want to do a whole coloring book page. Or maybe you get bored. I know a lot of people, they get bored doing actual coloring books. Although, although <laughs> I do have fun floral mandalas for relaxation and stress relief. Okay, commercial. <laughs> this is my coloring book that I did all of the artwork for. And there are 50. Ooh, there's there's one that's even started being colored. There's 50 designs, all hand drawn, and this is available on Amazon and it's only seven bucks. So full book, not, not expensive. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, I worked in education for almost 24 years. And I love this as my job. I love being able to bring creativity and helping people share in that, that creative love that I've got in that journey or really makes me happy. See how those colors just blended together? It's very much like coloring in rubber stamping. Go ahead and zoom back in. Yeah, 50 designs for, for seven bucks. Now I am going to be, um, 
on my on my website I don't know if I still have it up right now or not or if I took it down because I'm working on it I am uh, I did a coloring book a couple years ago that was all snow people and friends very doodly a lot of fun and I think I am going I am working on not I think I am working on getting it uh, laid out to go on to Amazon to be able to be a printed coloring book. So if you are interested in that, leave me a comment and let me know if you would like Snowman and Friends. It will be 25 pictures. It will be an 8.5 by 11 or 8 by 10 book. I'm not quite sure what it's going to end up. And it will probably be in the same um, $7 range. It'll be 25 pieces of art. And it is but very much more um, specific to a winter. It's not all Christmas. It, it is snowmen, very vintage style. And some of the people here have already purchased it as, as a PDF download book to be able to be printed from home. And I did that at the five dollar purchase and I may I may bring it back as a five dollar downloadable so we'll see thank you Mark for posting the book the link I appreciate that I'm taking a little bit of that green and just setting it here in the bottom and then ooh, now I'm gonna pick up some of that green and I'm just gonna put it on the floor underneath the pumpkin. There we go. See? The colors that are on your pa paper already can be used as a palette. Oh, and that's another thing that you can do with your watercolor pencils is if you if you want to take your, your colors with you but you don't want to take all the pencils, you can color them off like to make small cards, you can take and actually color with your pencil. And then, you know, say you've got your three colors or four colors or eight colors or whatever, you've colored in little like one inch squares or two centimeter squares. And then say, oops, sorry. And then say, there's, you know, I want a little bit of green so I can pick up some green here and paint. Ooh, I want a little bit of red for this poppy or this tulip or this flower of whatever kind it is. Maybe I want to put a little bit of that red down here. See, you can actually do a painting with your colored pencils just your watercolor pencils just put down. They're going to be softer. They're going to be water, waterier and washier. But uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to be able to do that. Tips and tricks <laughs> with Stephanie. <laughs> yep, that's that's the name of the game here. I'm all for letting you know, giving you ideas and ways to make your make your materials go farther do more and I think I'm gonna put just a little bit of this umber underneath so I thought that was what I had picked up now you see here once the paper is wet and you've already got color down it's very difficult to put more color on top of it. You can, but it's a little more difficult. Well, I think that's pretty. Now I'm going to go to the center, get it wet, and I'm going to work my way out to the edge. I'm not bringing that color in, I'm pushing it away, but I wanted to smooth it out just a little bit. Oh, favorite watercolor artists that I admire? 
Ooh. There's so many people out there that are that are doing watercolor and that do watercolor on their uh, YouTube channels or on their Facebook channels, Facebook pages. So Lindsay Wyrick, I love her watercolor. I love the way she um, breaks things down. I try to emulate a little bit of the way she will break things down in my own art, but we're definitely, I'm not copying her style or anything like that. Um, let's see. I really like, I, I really like the art of Angela Fair. I'm not a fan of her live streams, but I like her art. I like her watercolors. Um, oh, there's an Irish guy, older Irish guy. Uh, what subject grade did I teach? I worked in middle school for 23 and a half, almost 24 years, and I was the computer technology support. I was not actually a certificated teacher. I was one of the support. So I was the person that everybody called when their computer wasn't working, when their password wasn't working, when they had problems with a program not working, or they needed to learn how to use a program. I would teach the teachers how to use the programs. So I took care of a building with around 700 students and about a hundred staff. And I started in the early 1990s with the old um, Apple LC2s and LC3 computers in the in the building and then we moved to Compaq and Dell and IMAX and then to the iPads where it became a one-to-one -one. all students had an iPad all staff had iPads and we still had computers so yeah I was the person people you know in general, people like seeing me come because they knew that I would solve their problems. And it's very puzzle solving, very creative, actually. People, sometimes people are very um, confused by the fact that I was so into computers and technology. But computers are they're like a giant puzzle and you have to be creative and have a creative mind, I think, to really work with them and get the, get the use out of them that you really, really need to do for the, to reach the potential. Frank Clark, that's it. Frank Clark is the one. And yeah, he doesn't use very many colors. I, I like how he does things with limited palette. And I love the abstract, abstract realism that he does. How's that for describing Frank? It's abstract realism. So yeah. Oh, and um, Steve from Mind of Watercolor. I like his... I like his style also. His intuit... Oh, and Creation CC. See, I could keep going. I could keep going. I could, I could go on and on with people I enjoy watching do watercolor. All right, so now we've got our pumpkin and our beans. And since I have this little random mark right there, I'm just going to use it to put my signature on. Ha ha. Let's see. Let me tuck this one right in underneath of there. Okay, we've got six cards done. We are going to make pie. And so I'm going to start off here with the pumpkin pie because that's going to be the quickest. 
and I'm going to take, I really want, let's see here. I really want a warm brown, so kind of a spice brown. Let's, let's just back up here so I'm not putting it in your face. Oh, I'll have to check out Peter Schiller. So this is Rust Orange. That looks like a pumpkin pie spice color. And this is my, my bundle of the Arteza watercolor pencils. And I did, did I swatch all of these colors? If I didn't swatch, if I didn't swatch all of these, would you guys, would you watch a ginormous swatching video? A lot of people seem to like swatching videos. So this is ginger brown. Oh, that's, that's a good color. I like that. Okay, zoom, 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 zoom. Oh, there's, there's a lot of people out there. Yeah. So ginger brown. Get some of that on here. You know, because pumpkin, pumpkin pie, once it's baked, it's not really orange. It's, it's really warm, comforting, brownish. You know, it's, it's made with, well, when I make it, <laughs> it's made with non-fat milk or 1% milk and, um, eggs and spices and very, very little sugar. This is the rust orange. It's going to warm this up even more deep in the tone. And if you don't know what colors to pick, there are all kinds of color pat, um, color palette, color picking type of things out there. I was contacted by a gal. She has a product called the uh, color catalog and it's a PDF interactive PDF that you can choose colors. I just downloaded it. So I am going to be looking at it and seeing if it's something that we want to to look at on the channel. I've had a few different companies contacting me recently to do um, reviews or do, you know, look at their product and see if it's something that would be useful to our community. Because you know what? If it's not useful to our community, I'm not going to share it. I am taking some lighter, that pumpkin orange now, and putting that in here. Whoops, I've got the auto focus. Turn that off. But I know a lot of people have a hard time picking colors to do something, and it's sort of a, the app is sort of a palette picker. And, uh, so I'm, I'm excited to get it downloaded onto my tablet and play with it. Yeah, um, Kirsty Partridge, she is really good. There's, I, I love her artwork. She is a phenomenal artist and she does do things in, um, you know, break things down in a way that's good for beginners. She has a few opinions and I think all artists have a few opinions and sometimes, and I try very hard to not, um, say, you know, something is never do this unless it's something that's, you know, dangerous. You know, I, I try not to limit people and say, you know, this is the only way that you should be doing this. This is the best way. Well, it's the best way for 
that particular artist, but it's not necessarily the best way for me. Maybe I need to go at something in a slightly different order. And so, you know, I, I find that with Kirsty, I sit there going, but hold it, wait, no, <laughs> it doesn't have to be done that way. And there's an easier way to do that. So, you know, it's, it's all a matter of becoming comfortable with your materials. And sometimes you have to experiment and do things in other ways. Now I'm taking some of that uh, ginger brown again up onto the crust and down onto the crust. And then I'm taking a little bit of the burnt umber because you know that top edge of the crust usually gets a little bit extra brown. The bottom not so much, but I'm going to put a little bit of that down here also. Put a little bit, I'm actually going to take the pen, pencil, and I'm going to take some of that umber and I'm just going to make some little lines down in here to make it feel a little bit harder. Yeah, that's, and that's it. I mean, watch everybody, learn from everybody because sometimes one person will say one thing that will just flip the light switch on for you. Will illuminate all. Let's see. I think for this one, maybe I'll just a tiny bit of, tiny bit of blue. This is the sky blue. I'm not going to put a ton of color and I don't know that I'm even going to get it wet on the cream for that one just the tiniest little hint of color. I mean, you can't even, you can't even hardly see it. Tiniest hint of color. So welcome. <laughs> yeah, seeing things sideways, doing things your own way. That's, that's definitely, I'm just putting some water out onto the, onto the surface underneath of me here. I, this is just a piece of that plastic coral class that I use for, for taping my watercolors down to. This one just happens to be a large sheet of it. See, look at that. Oh, that looks like yummy pumpkin pie. See, and I took a little bit of that color that was on my brush down here up into the crust. And down here onto the table. And now pumpkin pie does have a bit of a shine and a glisten. When this is dry, maybe I'll put a little bit of watercolor. I mean watercolor. A little bit of the um, the white gel pen. We'll let that sit over to the side now. That pumpkins, that pumpkin pie needs to cool. <laughs> A bakery run. Oh yeah. All right. So starting off, I'm actually going to take some Prussian blue. This is going to be a dark cherry pie. So I'm going to put some Prussian blue in some of those shadows. We will be using a white gel pen, the Uniball, to make this shiny and glossy for the filling. But it's going to be, you know, deep, 
deep in there. I think I'm actually going to grab a little amethyst purple. Yeah, this could be blueberry pie. I'm just stacking some colors up. I'm doing this from memory and from my emotional response to what a cherry pie will be. <laughs> so right now it looks like a blueberry pie. That's okay. Because now I'm going to take some crimson red and I'm going to basically give it just a good, quick run over everything. I'm going to make these into really dark cherries. And since I know I'm going to use the white pen, I can just color the whole thing and not save the whites in that area. Get our squishy cherries on here. Get that shimmery filling filled in. All right, so now I am going to go back in and start doing a little bit more detail -y coloring. It's light and shadow. I mean, all of, all of watercolor, all of drawing, you're dealing with light and shadow and line. So see, look at that. Boom. That cherry just popped out. Little piece of a cherry right here. Saying light and shadow. And now I just picked up the carmine red, which is a very pink red. See how that's going? I love meat pies. Being gluten free though makes it really tricky. I have to find my own, uh, make my own. But I actually make a really nice crust. So I can, I can make good, I make really nice sausage rolls too. I like sausage, sausage, sausage rolls. Ooh, yeah, doing a whole, doing a whole bakery case. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Drawing a bakery case or just drawing up lots of plates of, lots of plates of yummy, yummy treats. Unsplash is a really great place to find photographs of artwork or of things that you want to make into art. So I would suggest unsplash.com as a place to go and look for references. If you don't have a good reference and you want one, let's see, I am going to actually make this deepen up now, those darker cherries, even more dark. I'm enjoying how this is looking without the water. This is going to be interesting. Should I get it wet? I do need to put the crust on also and the vanilla ice cream. So boy, but you're learning a whole lot of different things here, right? You're, you're learning so many different tips techniques. Every time, every time you tune in, you'll, you'll learn something new or you have the opportunity to learn something new. I'm not going to force anybody into learning. So, you know, maybe, Ooh, I wonder, warm those up just a little bit. Add just a little, Ooh, a little bit of some yellow onto it. Warm those cherries up just a little bit. Maybe they were Rainier's, not dark cherries. Even though you don't tend to make pie with Rainier's or hood.
Oh my goodness. All right. We're going to, we're going to get it wet. <laughs> uh, but see, that's the reason why I do these artwork instead of, <laughs> instead of baking all the pie or baking all the treats. Although I, I am a good baker. Mark and I have both gone through periods of time where uh, there was a lot of weight loss going on because I was too good of a baker. But it was something I learned when I was very young that I really enjoyed baking and making food and sharing it with people. So in a way, it wasn't a surprise to me that my son went to culinary school. But then he found out that he had a whole bunch of food allergies. <laughs> and it made it made cooking really, really challenging. He graduated and then now he has gone back to his first love, which is horticulture and growing plants. Okay, so this is a doodle, guys. Remember, this is this is a doodle. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put some rust brown. Where is that rust brown? Put a little bit of rust brown up here in the crust. I'm just Remember, this is watercolor. It's going to move. Got a fairly hefty crust up the back, but then the bottom got a little thin. It happens. Happens in real life, too. All right, take a little bit of that burnt umber. Put some shadow underneath the top crust edge there. down inside that slit and then in the divisions. So yeah, this is doodling and this is really making our own color books. And I like that. I'm going to take a tiny bit of that pumpkin orange, warm up the crust just a little. got a nice nice glaze on that and let's see I did it again I didn't get the burnt sienna or that type of a brown ooh ooh maybe no burnt sienna let's see sienna brown there we go Sienna brown is a nice warm brown for the back and bottom of that crust where it's touching the touching the pan where the crust is like bumping up and you've got some highlight and shadow. And see I need oh I need a darker red. Not, no, not magenta. Um, so sometimes when you're doing things like this, you're going, ooh, what do I need to do? I need maybe garnet. You do get to a point where the color is on your paper heavy enough that you're not going to get a really dark lay down. Hmm, okay. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. No. Darker. See, I'm just having, I'm having fun just playing with it, guys. I hope that you don't mind that. 
All right, I am going to take just the smidgiest smidge of Sienna Brown. And make that into a bit of a shadow on my ice cream. You know, maybe this is a, a lovely, lovely little, um, oh, what are we, like a French vanilla type of ice cream. It's got a bit of a cream to it. So maybe, oh, more like a custard ice cream. Yeah. It's a real eggy base. So there's a bit of a, a warm, creamy glow to it. There we go. That'll be good. So get that pie put pie crust put on there. And yeah, one of the things with is getting the right contrast between things, you know? That is, that is one of the tricks for tricky things. It's getting enough contrast. All right, so. Soften that up. Get that sort of flowing around a little bit. You know, ice cream doesn't tend to have a hard outline edge, and I know that, but we were doodling. All right. A little bit of that there. I need to grab my white gel pen. So I've got it in the bottom of the thing here. This is the Signo Uniball UM153 white. It is my favorite white pen. But you can also use just some white gouache, white acrylic paint. So I'm just giving it some of those little highlighty bits in the in the fruit filling. And that also helps to make the color look like it's a little bit deeper because when you put something bright on top, it makes everything look a little bit deeper. I'm trying to not put too much. It's, it's so hard. You never know when to stop or I never know when to stop. Just a little bit, just a little bit. I wanna go in and give kind of this edge up here. A little bit of glossiness. Maybe a few little spots, a few little places in the pie where the, where the light is hitting. And now let's zoom out. Okay, so this is going to be the last last call for folks that want to enter for the contest. We're going to be picking four names. I am not going to reset the um, random generator each time. I am just going to bring up the random generator and um, we will pick four numbers. But I have to go and look at the I have to go and look at the at the list real quick. Ooh, look at that. Aren't those pretty? Okay, so it took two and a half hours, but we drew them all 
and inked them all and colored them all. I think that's pretty good. Eight pictures in two and a half hours. I'm excited. All right, so now what I need to do is while you're looking at the pretty pictures right here, I am going to go and bring up my my responses. They're, oh my goodness. So I give you guys a couple more, give you another minute here. Here, let's, let's just, let's just go and I'll just come on the screen for a minute. All right. So guys, what do you think, we're, how, how it's happened? How it's happened? How this worked out? I'm pretty excited. I love these. I hope that people are going to enjoy. I'm going to do them in sets like this. So it will be the two cups. It will be the green beans and pumpkin, the love potion and cookies, because boy, I mean, and pumpkin pie and cherry pie. Ah. Oh, sign the pie. Thank you so much, Sharna. All right, sign in the pie. I know sometimes I forget to sign until way after. I always sign before I send things though. So let's zoom back in just a little bit. All right. So this is just beautiful. All right. If you, uh, hopefully you got your, your entry in, I am going to be closing the entries. So refresh responses, 24 responses. All right. That's, that's it. End of the responses. No more being accepted. And now I am going to create a new spreadsheet and then it does that to me. <laughs> Always does that to me. It goes to this clear your cache and then I have to go to it again. There we are. We are, we're going to select four. All right. And we have from, well, I'll put it down as one to 25. It's two to 24, but I'll put it into random generator as one to 25. So let's go to random.com. random.org, sorry, org. And the generator. All right, so now we're going, and we're just going to pick the number. Okay, guys, I'm not sure why the sound was off. It's working in my other windows. So our winners, we've got number five, number 12, number four, and number seven. So number five was Dawn Collins. Draw tangles with Dawn. Number four is Anessa Harris. 
So number four is Anessa Harris. Now I'm going to, and number 12 is um, Catherine Slayman and number, or, and number, number 12. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So, sorry guys, this is just so weird. So number five, the person who had number five is Don Collins. She won the mugs. Number four is Anessa Harris. And she won the bottles. Number 12 is the beans and pumpkin. And that is Catherine Slayman. And she won the pumpkin and beans. And number four is number seven. And that is Nikki. Nikki, I don't know your last name. Hopefully you gave me your email. <laughs> All right, guys. So now I'm just going to... Um, bring it up real quick with the, the names so you can actually see where they are and number 12. All right. So I'm going to go to the screen. You're not going to hear me, but I'll just show it to you real quick. Sorry about that. I did not realize that the sound was not working on the, um, on the other screens, <laughs> but four winners, we picked four winners and I am so excited. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I am going to get the, um, email sent to all of the winners to get their mailing addresses. And please leave a comment in the comment section after the video and let me know if you have um, an idea that you would like to have me draw or doodle, something that you would like to learn how to draw or doodle. I would love to share that with you. And oh my gosh, look at how juicy that cherry pie looks. Mm, I love it. Thank you guys. Remember, do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. Subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, like this video, and share it with your friends. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>